This, <coughs> this short video will address um, Newton's laws as applied to systems of particles. In most cases, it's not something we really need to take, be concerned about because Newton's laws we know applies to a single object. Um, it, it could apply to um, each object in a system of particles or we can apply Newton's laws to the entire system as one particular, as one object. Uh, that is, the net force on a collection of particles is equal to the mass of uh, the collection of particles times the acceleration of the collection of particles. And we've seen that in, in many cases, the collection of particles has the same acceleration. And so, uh, applying Newton's laws to the system of particles really does not provide us with any kind of uh, new or different situation. However, what if we have a system of particles in which uh, each individual particle has a different acceleration under those conditions? How is Newton's law applied? So this is what we're addressing. <clears throat> when we talk about a system of particles, it's convenient to talk about the center of mass. Uh, it's sort of like the average point um, of this system of particles, or that point that moves as if all of the mass were concentrated there and ec all external forces appear to be applied there. So something like the average position of the particles. Um, and this is a mathematical definition of the center of mass, where the x-coordinate of the center of mass, the y-coordinate of the center of mass, and the z-coordinate of the center of mass. Perhaps it is easiest if we show some example. So here we have uh, two particles, mass 3 kilograms, 2 kilograms, located as shown. Um, what is the location of the center of mass? I'm going to apply my definition m1 x1 plus m2 x2 over m1 plus m2. Uh, plugging in the appropriate values, I show that the location of the center of mass is at the position uh, 6.4 meters, or right there. Now notice it is located closer to the more massive of the two objects, as we expect. So that's the location of the center of mass. <clears throat> Starting off with our definition of, and, and here we're going to consider only a one-dimensional kind of motion. So the location of the XCM given by this, and what I'm going to do is take the derivative of both sides of the equation. When I do that, the derivative with respect to T of XCM will give me the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the summation of m sub i dxi dt over summation of the masses. Now this quantity here, dxi dt, is the speed of each individual piece, and so I ended up, end up with something like this in the numerator. This identified the numerator as uh, the momentum of the system, and we'll talk more about that a bit later when we talk about uh, momentum, divided by the sum of the masses. I'm going to take the derivative again of both sides of the equation with respect to t, and when I take dvcm dt, uh, that will give me the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to, in the numerator, m sub i a sub i, um, and this quantity m sub i summation of m sub i a sub i gives me the net force. And so I get that ACM is equal to the net force divided by uh, the summation of the masses. <coughs> um, I'm just taking this equation and rearranging quantities, solving for F net. I end up with an equation like this, where this capital M represents the sum of the masses of our system, summation of M sub i times ACM, the acceleration of the center of mass, is equal to M sub i times A sub i. And, and so when we have a problem where we have uh, objects within our system moving with different accelerations, then we can write that the net force must be equal to the mass of each of the particles times each particle's acceleration and sum all that up. Okay, so this is a, a useful equation. 
Now again, keep in mind that what we're talking about is one dimensional motion. So if acceleration of particle one and acceleration of particle two are in different directions, then we have to break this up into an X component equation and then a Y component equation and so forth. <clears throat> Um, it'd be useful in some situation like this. Suppose we have a, a massless pulley with attached masses attached to strings hanging from the pulley. And this pulley consists of a base of mass 4m. Um, we know that uh, that 3m will, this 3m mass will accelerate downward. m will accelerate upward with the same acceleration. And it's a very simple problem to figure out. Uh, what the acceleration, the upward acceleration of m and the downward acceleration of 3m is. Um, but suppose the question that we want to answer, address, is find the normal force exerted by the table on Atwood's machine system. The force exerted by the table on Atwood's machine. Um, well, looking at this Atwood's machine as the entire system, we see that different parts have uh, different accelerations. 4m has acceleration of zero, while m has the acceleration upward, 3m has an acceleration downward. And there's also the force of the table on the machine, and that's an upward force. And so Knowing uh, the equation that we derived on the previous slide about the net force in the system, this will allow us to calculate the normal force acting on the system. Okay, so this is a particular example in which different parts of the problem uh, actually are moving with accelerations in, in this case, different directions. <clears throat>